Hi everyone and welcome to part two of my Dilution Slides Journal flip through. So since the last time I did my flip through I have decorated my front cover and the design here is thanks to Adele from Inky Quill from her channel Let's Get Inky who basically broke into her sticker collection and went nuts. So I decided, seeing I have got stickers that have been sitting around for years and years and years, I would do the same. And basically, as she describes it, as a plonk and stick. So there's no real rhyme or reason. It was just using up as much as I possibly could onto the one page. Um, there's old basic grey stickers. Uh, most of them are from Seven Gypsies, from sheets that... Go and grab them. Look like this. So all different shapes. They're not ones that I were ever, was ever going to use. They've got some good words that I will cut out and keep for later on. But that's pretty much where I got um, the design from. So later on in my flip through, I've got some artwork that I did using the same um, technique. I just, because this is a front cover, I actually covered it with a good thick layer of gel medium just to protect it as well. So. I, I was really pleased with how it turned out. Oh, the journal's got so heavy. <laughs> okay, since I did this as well, there's a few pages in the front of my journal that I finished off. This is my Mandela page, which was half done last time you saw it. Um, this is a great project just for days that I wanted to do something but didn't have enough time to do a huge amount. But I could just go in and doodle. And I found it really, really relaxing to do. So this page is finally finished. The other page that I finished off was... Oh, where is it? Here. I had a really nice background that I didn't know what to do with. So I, recently I got a few new stencils. I wanted to try them out. And this is what I came up with. Um, this paste is a gold texture paste, which is called Cosmic Shimmer. It is amazing stuff. It dries really, really quickly and the colour is just fantastic. So if you can get your hands on some, it's fab. The other page that I missed out on was because it actually stuck together and I didn't realise at the time. So this one I called Here's the Crazy Ones. And I got this stencil from Kinder Creations, which is a two-part stencil um, to get the face. And when I saw it, I thought, wow, having a glitter beard would be amazing. So I went about the process of doing that and remembered a quote when I was doing my art course from, it's attributed to Steve Jobs, whether it's actually his quote or not, about um, here's the crazy ones. And I thought that fitted really nicely with it. So there is a YouTube tutorial on how to do this on my channel if you're interested in finding out how this one came together. Um, you can see where it's stuck together. I've used the colour shine on it, Heidi Swap colour shine. And for some reason it just doesn't dry. Um, I'm not sure what the makeup of the ink is, so it does stick together. So just be aware of that if you're using it. So on to the second part of my journal. This is one of my first, well, it's the first page after the last flip through. But none of this is done consecutively. So, um... This was a page that I had sitting in here for ages. I really enjoyed, had a lovely background, but didn't know what to do with it. So this piece was created for Mermaid. And it was, um, the prompt was Stargazing Siren. So um, I used a Donna Downey stencil and turned her into a mermaid. And I thought the background kind of looked universal, galaxy type. So that's what I used there. This beautiful shimmer was um, a handmade watercolour from Designs by Rachel Beth. It's a happy birthday set and it's a copper candle. It's just, I can't speak highly enough of this watercolour set. So I have actually bought a few more of her different handmade designs, I have to say, because they're just divine watercolours. This next page, I've got a YouTube tutorial on how it went together. Um, it's quite funny to watch because it's, it went together really nicely. Then I completely stuffed it up and I kind of got it back. But I'm sure, not sure if you can see in the video or not. 
there is some remnants of glitter because it was a, a glitter disaster with this page. So, um, yes, <laughs> you, if you want to see how bad it looked, go and find the YouTube channel and see how I got it back from the brink of disaster. It's using uh, Jane Davenport's collage tissue, which are fun to use as well. This page was done for um, Anzac Day, which is on the 25th of April in Australia and New Zealand. And it's, I've, it's an important day for me as well. On the, in 2003, my sister and I went to the Gallipoli Peninsula for Anzac Day and actually um, was there for the commemorations. And it's just that night has been imprinted on my brain for the rest of my life. And I always see it in silhouettes. And the reason for that is um, during the dawn service, because the Iraqi war was sort of at the height at that stage, um, the Turkish soldiers were patrolling up on top of the cliff tops to keep all the people there safe. But it was just such an eerie sight because we were sitting down looking up at the cliffs where the soldiers were and all you could see were the silhouettes of soldiers still up in the cliffs. So it was like the, the soldiers from World War I were there looking over us. Um, and it was, just, it was just an amazing experience to be there for that. So um, it's affected me profoundly, it's affected my teaching profoundly and it's just something that I wanted to commemorate in my journal as well. This page is another page I've done a very short um, time-lapse video on my YouTube channel. Um, just exploring doing different layers of acrylic paints, using tissue papers, um, collage in the background, and trying to get some hair happening. I've been struggling with hair, so Mermaid has been really good for me to um, experiment with drawing different hair textures, and I quite like how this one turned out. These two pages I absolutely adore, just because they're so bright and cheery. This page, again, I've got a YouTube tutorial on how I did the background called Watercolour Kisses. Um, this is just a colouring page that I cut out and stuck into my book using alcohol markers, which again, I don't tend to use very often, but I really liked how this turned out and I loved that I could journal on the girls' um, t-shirt. This page is inspired by Lisa Oxley and a few other people who I follow on Instagram. Um, I love the fact it's just blocky colour with doodling over the top. Again, it was just something really mindless that I could do. I could sit there and just play and not really think about what I was doing. It was just repeated patterns. In some instances in the background, I've actually used stencils and just drawn through those the paint markers. The words on here actually came from a card that my sister sent me um, and you can see sort of the colours and the patterns that I've sort of tried to replicate on here as well. And I've got a lovely picture of my niece in the back which so that sits on my art desk looking at me but I'm glad I could sort of copy or have something similar in my journal that sort of reminds me of that card. These two pages again really sing of colour to me. <clears throat> They're all done with Jane Davenport, or mostly Jane Davenport supplies. I got a, a bit of a parcel arrived in the post and I had to swatch out the colours and, and have a go with the different things. So I got Jane's favourite paint set, which are most of the colours in this, the dark blue, light blue, purple and the pink. And I also got the supplies to make paint markers. Now if you go to her website and her YouTube channel, She's got a short YouTube video on how to make paint markers or your own paint pens, just using her fine line tip and some flow medium. So using that formula, just to do some doodling in the background with the different pens, that's how I did the writing on here as well. Um, and the pictures themselves are from her paint, uh, her paper pad. Uh, it just it was a fairly quick and easy page but it just sort of flowed together really nicely and again just a really cheery page to turn to in the middle of your art journal. This is another piece done from Mermaid which is called Hello Sailor. 
I like that I did a Chunky Mermaid and it was based on a figure from I think Jane's it's either I think it was out of her fabulous figures book I'm not 100% sure which book there was one that I was sort of using as a, a model um, to, to draw onto and some of her tissue here I really like the outlining with the white on this page it worked really really well this page was trying out some new stencils I got from Flutterby Designs which is an Australian company which I love the different sentiments and I love the fact that well some people might think that's a little bit rude it really spoke to me and this page in particular was after a fairly tough week and it sort of just summed up everything it needed to so um, yeah I was really pleased that I got those stencils and I could use them great thing about them is you can mask off different sections of it and just have the little bits of the words and little phrases on your page or you can use all of them as once as a background these are two more pages for mermaid or mermaid I'm not really a mermaid person I don't get the fascination but I thought I'd challenge myself and have a bit of a go I was having and particularly later on sort of starting to get a bit of creative block or just because I've been creating every day we're now up to day 57 of this project I'm oh, sorry doing a hundred days project and I've been trying to art journal sort of every day since January some days you do it for fun and because you've got an idea and some days you just do it to to get something on the page so having a challenge to motivate you is really really helpful so this page I enjoyed doing because um, my mum's just got into art journaling and I'm showing her how to do different stuff in the background so then creating the foreground to go over a top I thought the mermaids were a good good mix to go with that I quite like this page too just with the different colors um, and getting the shimmers again that's using the um, designs by Rachel Beth watercolors over the top to get that sort of gold shimmery effect and the mermaid micas just to get a really light detail in the background Oops. Okay. this is a page I did which was inspired by a technique I teach in my primary school art class lots and I'm sure my step all of you have done it where you use wax crayon in the background over a whole page then you paint over the top with black paint and you scratch off the top so what I did was put acrylic paints the dilution paints in the background painted made sure that was really really dry and that's really important then painted over the black marble over the top and while it was still wet rubbed it off so it's doing the ghosting technique basically of the um, Um, stenciling technique that's that's been around um, because it's quite black you need to use a fair bit of water and very wet baby wipes to try and remove all of it and you need to do it while the black paint's still fairly wet and I found afterwards highlighting it with the white really made the image pop out of the background so and the gold around here was using that paint pen that I made before so I sorry turn down the baby monitor <laughs> um, and that's sort of, I like the way it sort of bled out and made it look a bit more um, organic so these two stencils are or three stencils actually are Donna Downey stencils okay. this page I absolutely hate <laughs> uh, yeah it's it, I was collaging I was having a go with the dilutions ink sprays now I absolutely adore the ink sprays don't get me wrong but I love layering and I love collage and you just cannot do that with ink sprays they're just something to sit on the top and I kept trying and kept trying and I was just getting more and more frustrated so this was how it ended up and I've got a feeling at some stage it might be painted over or I might just leave it and leave it as a lesson um, but yeah it's not a favorite 
these two pages as well I don't mind them but they were done just to be done rather than having a bit of passion behind them so this one again is using some images from the whimsical girls um, coloring book coloring journal art journal that Jane Davenport's just released um, I got one to sit my shelf and one that I could actually use and cut up and do different stuff with because I knew if I just had one I wouldn't do anything with it there's lots of journaling in the background about um, the three generations in my family and how we get on and what we do and why I admire them this page was done as um, a challenge for the Dina Wakeley media tribe group um, which was looking at analogous colours and near complements. So looking at ruby and or red and turquoise together. Now it's a colour scheme that I first sort of explored in 2007. I did a colour journal using these colours and this was a reinterpretation of one of the pages I did in that. So I quite liked it but I wasn't completely happy with it. Um, but I do love that colour combination. This page was the page based on my journal cover um, using lots and lots of stickers in the background. So basically I just went nuts, stuck them all down. Once I'd done that I gessoed over the top of them um, and then put some Don and Downey stencils, some gold texture paste over the top and I really loved this page. I like the fact that the stickers are um, peeking through and they give this sort of funny texture in the background. Um, the stickers are completely random, have absolutely nothing to do with the page itself. It's just to create that sort of blocky background. Okay. These two pages, I'm very tempted to stick them together because I really don't like them. <laughs> this is based on some artwork I saw um, Lisa Oxley do, Scrap Witch Lisa on Instagram check her stuff out because it is amazing it is just so motivating to see what she does and everything she does is just fabulous it was really interesting technique to do it didn't take that long to do if I did it again I'd probably do it slightly differently and I might like it a little bit more it's okay <laughs> um, and I didn't put the S in so so that annoys me too. Find me where the wild things grow. This page was done using the same technique as over here, using the lots of stickers. I wanted to replicate um, scales. I'm trying to get that sort of mermaidy scale thing going. Sort of, you've got a bit of a half scale. I want to put in the silver scale for the rainbow fish. If anyone's ever read that story, um, but it just didn't work. I didn't like the colours I used. I hated the fact I had all these stickers out and I had these water stickers and I thought oh, I could use those and yeah less said about this page the better these two pages are based on Kelly Ray Roberts work now she's been an artist she's been around for a long time and does that sort of vintagey collagey type stuff which I absolutely adore this page um, I wanted to use crackle paste and make it look quite vintage. I've done a, a canvas like this which I wanted to replicate into my art journal and it didn't quite work the way I wanted it to. Um, the crackle paste or crackle, I used the distressed crackle paint. It um, is a few years old so some of it was chipping off and stuff and for some stupid reason I decided to put a little bit of white on this page too so it just looks mouldy but it's a learning curve there is will be a video of this page going up so you can see the process this page on the other hand though I absolutely adore um, and I think it's because I've used the pattern paper rather than trying to create patterns in the background underneath all these layers of paint there is actually collage papers and a collage and I wanted to use glazes on it but then I just got a bit heavy handed with the top layers so it sort of missed out and all of that whereas on this page I was much more restrained. I also struggled on this page drawing the eyes open and I wish I'd kept with it because um, I really like how her face looks on this page. 
Uh, this page is also going to be going up on the YouTube channel soon. And this was trying to do the same technique as the Live Your Art page back here. But I used black gesso instead. And I don't know why I used black gesso because I know it dries a lot faster than some of the other paints. So it was harder to scrub off. And I also covered the page in clear gesso as well. And it was a different clear gesso than I usually use. It's got a lot more tooth. So everything was kind of sticking together. But I don't mind it in the end um, and I really like the white stamping over the top it sort of balanced it off and this is a, another image from the whimsical girls book from Jane Davenport this um, butterfly was done for a dilutions uh, Facebook challenge which was use pastels flowers and butterflies now I've got all the dilutions paints but I don't have many of her, her stamps. So I decided that I would do the old kindergarten trick where you blob down the paint, put the two pages together, squish it out to make a butterfly, and then doodle over the top. Um, so I was really happy with how this came together. And again, I really enjoy just sitting there and doodling. Um, it, it clears my mind. I like doing the different patterns. I like the fact that particularly on this page, once I did one pattern, I just had to repeat it on the other side. So it gave me, I didn't have to think as much about what am I going to do in the next, next part. This page was done again for the Dina Wakeley Media Challenge for the Turquoise and Red Challenge. And there is a video up um, on my YouTube channel about this page. I really love how this came together. For me, it's a much simpler page than usual, I suppose, and I did actually spend a bit of time looking at it going, oh, it's not finished, it's not finished, but I'm glad I left it the way it was. I think it lets colour speak through, and I absolutely adore these Dina Wakeley stencils over here. Um, so I was really happy with this page. This is, again, while I had the colour wheels out for the Dina Wakeley challenge, I thought I'd try another colour combination. And this is the analogous colours with complement. So I was using the blackberry violet, eggplant, magenta and cheddar. So they're not colours I use very often. Um, but it was fun having a play with them. And again using the Jane Davenport tissues in the background. And lots of stencils and so on. Just to put a bit more texture into the page. So... At this stage, a lot of these pages, my motivation behind them was just to have a go, try something different, get out of your comfort zone, see what works, see what doesn't work. And yeah, it, it did help because I was feeling in a real funk after doing that horrible inky page. <laughs> so um, this page was done with leftover paint from the ink, uh, from the paints over here. I actually really, really liked it. And the dots were just the using up the cheddar paint that was on my dauber. And all I've done is just paint over the top with the um, Copper Candles paint just to make it a little bit more sparkly. And I did happen to get some more of the Tim Holtz foam alphabet stamps. I just love that there was just a page in there that told me that being me was my superpower because I think I needed to hear that that week. This was another page for the Mermaid um, challenge. It was looking at the kelp in the background. So I, I quite like how this page went together. I took some notion and bought the Tim Holtz ocean stamps. And I don't know why I did it really because I had this idea I was going to make all these cards and in reality I knew it was never going to happen. But they work well on this page. The one thing I am really proud about on this page is I did hand letter this and it kind of actually looks like brush, proper brush lettering so that was that was a big bonus. This was my 50 days. I finally got to the 50 day mark in the um, 100 day challenge so halfway so I decided to celebrate that by um, putting in a picture of my Instagram feed of all the pages I've done so far and doing some artwork with them just to show me and remind me of how far I've come. 
So it's my first interactive page, which I had lots of fun doing. I'm just using all the pictures, printing them out and creating this page, cutting them out, just gluing two lots together to make the, the background. These two pages um, were me experimenting with watercolours. Now, I'm, I'm not a watercolour person. Um, I really haven't had very much experience with them. So I've been watching a lot of um, James Luke Burke creative uh, videos on YouTube. And if you haven't checked out his channel, please do, because he is just an amazing teacher. This is a copy of one of the pieces he did. Just to get the practice of creating the shapes, creating the layering. And I'm just delighted with how it turned out. This page was trying to create something like the colourful page I did back here, somewhere, uh, somewhere, somewhere, like this one, but with watercolours in the background. And I don't know if it picks up on the video or not, but they're just super, super sparkly and shiny. So these two were actually done in water, proper watercolour paper, cut out and stuck in, into the book. Okay, getting to the very end of my book getting a bit harder um, this was another page based on one of um, James's videos where he took an image cut at, cut it out and placed it over the top of a collage now it took a lot of cutting and I realized how out of practice I was with using a craft knife I used to use them all the time but um, I've obviously got out of practice with it a little bit and placing it over the top of a collage that I did and I really really like how this turned out this page I am super super proud of as well because this was my success story with uh, uh, dilution spray inks it actually did what I wanted to do I wanted to get those drippy beautiful layers and you can see the stamping coming up underneath um, this is done with embossing enamels in the background and then one of the Jane Davenport pages over the top. So I think this is probably one of my favourite pages in my journal at the moment. This final page was to do with the mermaids. Again, I've had these Jane Davenport face stamps for a while and I wanted to do something with them. And I had to use up some extra paints so I just chucked them down the background and made these mermaids. So, and just using some of the Heidi Shine colours in the background to make the hair sparkly. So, again, I probably overworked some of these. The hair looked really amazing before I actually started drawing over the top of them. So, again, it's learning that little bit of restraint. And this is the last page of my journal. So I decided that I need to put me in my journal because I've kind of avoided me. And this is a... Um, apron that I created um, and there's a video of how I created that on my YouTube channel so this is me being arty in my art space wearing my IT apron and reminding myself that this year in four and a half months I've completed two art journals I've started a YouTube channel um, and I'm really pleased with what I've done and I can't wait to see what I can do in the next few months so it was nice to have something to celebrate how far I'd come and it was like to remind me that you know you're gonna have funky days some days but all in all it's a pretty a good achievement to be able to get that much art done and another journal in four and a half months so thank you very much for checking out my art journal flip if you've got any questions about any of the pages you've seen um, please put it in the comments below please check out the first half of this um, journal flip so you can see the beginning of my journal and thank you very much for watching